Hello and welcome to Worldwide Gaming. I'm your host Ryan and from what it seems like forever, we're finally here to bring you new episodes and that includes new reviews like Bloodborne and Witcher 3. Uh, we have WG101s and retrospectives on Far Cry and uh, Fallout this episode, which I'm quite excited for. Um, and you might notice that I'm not in the studio at the moment. Um, I'm in a top secret location, but I'll tell you more about that at the end of the show. Stay tuned. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to fight your friends over the top of a giant industrial fan? Well, now you can, in Gang Beasts. With absurd physics and levels, this one is looking like one of the best upcoming fighting games. It's coming to PC and PS4 in 2015. From the developers of Rock Band comes an interesting game that mixes the FPS and music game genres. Chroma hopes to reimagine the classic first person shooter formula by blending it in with music gameplay. The game is coming to PC soon. This upcoming first-person exploration game has players going through a collection of short stories about a cursed family in Washington State. Each story focuses on a different generation of the family, from the 1900s to the present day, and it's coming to PS4 this year. Looking back, I think that was the first really bad sign. So that was a forecast, and uh, actually contains two really, really interesting games. Uh, Gang Beast, which has been an alpha for a while. It's actually a really good party game. It's kind of like a brawler, but um, you're so awkward and kind of ham-fisted that it's always a good time, especially for local co-op. Uh, and also Chroma, which uh, if you've seen the show before, you know my love for music games, uh, stuff like Fract OSC and Sound Shapes and that kind of stuff. Uh, Chroma looks really interesting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work with like the music and the shooting apparently being together, uh, but remains to be seen. Um, obviously, right now, we're in the middle of announcement se uh, season, so there's going to be a lot more announcements on games soon, um, and we'll check them out as they come. Uh, right now, though, we got Jared's review of Elite Dangerous. Elite is a lot like war. Long periods of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. You'll go from serenely shipping your goods from station to station, to suddenly dropping into the influence of a super hot white dwarf star, steadily cooking your little ship as you desperately try to escape. It's doable, but it's also possible that you'll have lost your ship and any cargo you happen to have been carrying. Learn from my mistakes. Add LHS 6309 to your do not visit list. Elite provides the new player with a small ship and a handful of credits, and doesn't even wave goodbye as it shoves you out of the station into a galaxy of over 400 billion stars, the vast majority of which have not been visited by the player base, and probably never will. At the current rate of exploration, it could take literal generations before everything is mapped out. The numbers are mind-boggling, and the out-of-your-depth feeling can become magnified, as beyond a handful of tutorials, you are largely left to work things out on your own from using the bulletin boards to make your first few thousand credits, through to figuring out how to upgrade your ship, or indeed, which one to buy next. Everything is a bit of an adventure. Elite gives you a set of tools, and then expects you to carve out your own place in the galaxy. Broadly speaking, there are five main careers you can choose to pursue. Bounty hunting, piracy, mining, exploration, and trading, which can sometimes amount to a literal interstellar beer run.
By far the most lucrative profession is trading, which can feel a lot like being at work. It generally boils down to a little spreadsheeting, pairing up places of high supply and demand, and then spending time, oh so much time, moving things between stations for profit. As tedious as it sounds, it brings a weird kind of satisfaction to see your bank account gradually swell until you can buy a bigger ship and load it up with even more goods. Conversely, the least lucrative but subjectively most exciting profession is bounty hunting, which will see you loading for bear and taking on the galaxy's criminals for cold, hard cash. Piloting an elite is one of those tasks that is easy to pick up but difficult to master. In addition to the complex controls that you would find on a plane, you also have access to lateral thrust, giving you 6 degrees of movement. There's also the ability to turn off flight assist mode, which will give you access to the game's Newtonian flight model, allowing you to pull faster and more creative manoeuvres, or alternatively, vomit inducing spins if you don't know what you're doing. There are a lot of controls you'll need access to, which makes the venerable gamepad a less attractive option than you would think, as there just aren't enough buttons to go around. You'll need to keep your keyboard within reach if you plan on sticking it out with the more traditional controller. You'll need to master your piloting skills, or at least have a fair idea of how to handle your ship to take part in combat. It can be a mixed bag, with the majority of the AI-controlled ships being laughably easy to defeat, while going into the public server can be a quick lesson in humility, as you realise there are some extraordinarily talented pilots out there. Power management is key to getting the most out of your ship, and being able to multitask is a huge plus here. You'll shunt power into your engines to close with the target, or to increase your ship's turning rate, then move that energy over to your weapons to take the shot you've just lined up, then over to your systems to shore up your shields as your opponent gets a bead on you and starts returning fire. It's exhilarating, but sometimes it can feel like micromanagement. From the angry growling of the Asp to the whispers from beyond the grave of the Hauler, the individual sound design for each of the ships is absolutely top-notch and lends a lot of character to your ride. The sound design for the weapons is less impressive, often sounding anemic and not at all what you'd expect to hear, forgetting for a moment that we shouldn't really be hearing anything in space anyway. The music that's provided as a backing to your adventure fits the tone of the game well, but it's not something you'll be humming under your breath while at work. By far the most stunning part of the game is the amount of effort that has gone into representing the various stellar bodies. The stars are modelled to look as we would expect them to, some cold and implacable in appearance while others visibly seethe with the forces playing across their surface. Black holes will gobble up the light around them and the vast nebulas will lend an ethereal appearance to everything within their bounds. Elite is polarising. On one hand you have one of the most boring, monotonous experiences you'll find outside of your 9 to 5. On the other hand, you have an exciting romp through one of the most beautiful environments you'll find in a video game today. At its core, Elite is a game that is exactly what you make of it. If you can make your own fun, you'll have a blast.